Good morning, everyone. So welcome to this uh, Fiverr and Eiffel Trust uh, training camp, uh, based on which you will be equipped with all the skills and knowledge to um, not only become Fiverr expert, expert, but also Eiffel Trust experts. And um, there is a um, um, quite comprehensive agenda of sessions along the week. And this is the first session where we will be introducing i trust the i trust program. And together with me is Rajiv Rajani, CTO of, of the iShare Foundation. So let me start uh, sharing the screen. And so we shall start uh, right, right away. Someone confirm my, uh, you see the slides? Yes, yes. looks good. All right. Thank you very much. So let's just start with the uh, uh, first introduction about the IFO Trust uh, program. But uh, first of all, what is the mission of this program? Um, uh, it is not uh, technology driven. Uh, at the end of the day, what we aim to uh, to do is boosting development of innovative services around creation of data value change uh, involving actors in multiple sectors you may have heard um, data space uh, as a concept is emerging with um, really a strong um, uh, a mission a strong vision uh, towards uh, support of uh, data economy concepts and uh, how we intend to uh, implement this mission is through uh, development and materialization of, uh, of, of a vision, which is that of creating a sustainable ecosystem and a vibrant community around a technology framework and that uh, we have set up um, that will enable creation of data spaces, supporting effective and trusted uh, data sharing among participants. Values that uh, are um, supported in this um, um, technology framework and overall in the design of uh, i for trust as a program is that of openness. First of all, we are um bringing uh, technologies that are based on uh, well-defined open standards and, and technologies um, uh, concepts to be supported have to do with the trustworthy exchange of data the ability by the different actors involved in data spaces to really perform a sovereign uh, on their data um, to really support interoperability in a quite effective manner and um, really uh, bring in technology that is general purpose, therefore can work cross domain, supporting innovation, supporting growth of uh, companies who can really expand the current uh, footprint they have of services with new innovative services that are based on data sharing. What we referred uh, as a data space, this is a, a quite hot topic nowadays in Europe. Uh, uh, many of you uh, may have started to hear about this concept, but what we do really mean uh, by data spaces? Well, data spaces are essentially decentralized uh, ecosystems that are um, built by means of a number of parties uh, which uh, are following a common purpose. And the purpose is not other than uh, developing services, improving processes by means of uh, sharing data, but sharing data in a way that uh, uh, you will grant that there will be effective um, 
exchange of data and all those exchanges uh, will take place um, based on um, uh, a trusted um, identification of the participants and um, a secure exchange of uh, data uh, so that every owner of a given data being shared uh, can uh, define the policies to be enforced regarding access to their data and usage of their data. Um, typically in a data spaces, uh, participants will need to deploy and set up a framework that is going to be the technology framework that they will be able to use for exchanging data with, uh, with other participants in the data space. But additionally, there will be a number of uh, service providers that uh, will bring uh, that kind of services that are needed in any data spaces to really support uh, innovation and, and connection among the participants. Um, examples of those services are marketplace services, brokering services, billing services, all that uh, kind of services that uh, um, the data spaces require in order to support a sustainable and innovation-driven ecosystem. And iShare and Fiverr Foundation are the partners that uh, decided to join forces within the i trust program, bringing the necessary components the so referred as building blocks, which will support uh, creation of these kind of data spaces. There will be technology components, building blocks, being part of this framework that we are bringing together. And but there will be also governance uh, uh, building blocks that. Uh, will be needed to, in order to create um, uh, such data spaces. iShare and Fiverr finally um, are working together with funding box, uh, quite um, um, expert uh, uh, organization, uh, managing cascade funding, and also supporting the creation of uh, communities. Uh, uh, and funding box is the uh, a great complement to what we are bringing within iShare and Fiber to really boost the development of uh, an ecosystem around i for trust technologies. Some examples of data spaces in real life uh, um, can be uh, around logistics, where different um, uh, participants may be sharing data to um, determine how, what is the best way to uh, uh, handle um, the uh, delivery of goods and this way also saving CO2, the carbon footprint and, and stuff like that or in, um, in connection to buildings, uh, helping to uh, support um, uh, what is the best way of planning uh, creation of, of development of buildings, but also the uh, maintenance of uh, these buildings over time to uh, make sure that, again, uh, uh, we um, uh, support a um, um, uh, sustainable uh, environment and activities, uh, reduce the carbon footprint and um, improve uh, uh, maintenance processes, to, to give an example, or um, along the um, uh, full agri-food um, chain. For instance, if we talk about livestock farming, how um, the different actors in the uh, uh, meat uh, production uh, line um, could uh, uh, join forces and exchange data for the better um, uh, uh, performance of all activities and also to make sure that, for instance, uh, animal welfare is 
um, uh, warranted um, across the um, uh, uh, whole uh, meat production line. Um, this is a bit the taxonomy of uh, building blocks that are supported in IFOTRAFT, and we are delivering within the project. Um, there are a number of technology building blocks that uh, we are offering that will help to materialize uh, data spaces from a technical perspective, uh, meaning uh, components that uh, the different participants have to deploy in order to start exchanging data effectively and in a trusted manner, together with um, a number of services that uh, will be made available uh, within the data space that can be uh, invoked by the different participants. And also there will be a set of um, governance building blocks. These are typically um, in connection to agreements that the different participants have to uh, uh, achieve uh, that um, uh, define aspects such as legal frameworks to be supported, um, uh, regulations to be uh, complying with, or uh, aspects about the governance of the different version of the technology components to give an, an example. Um, we will go through this presentation trying to give a high level overview of uh, each of these uh, building blocks. And um, uh, during the uh, technical training sessions that uh, will take place the remaining of the week in the afternoon, uh, we will go into the details about how uh, some of these uh, technology building blocks uh, can be used and can be used for creating concrete um, experiments and use cases uh, based on Eiffel Trust. Regarding technology building blocks, uh, we distinguish essentially three categories of building blocks. A first category has to do with uh, data interoperability. Uh, we will cover uh, more in detail uh, what is the approach being taken uh, regarding support of data interoperability. Second pillar will be focused on how to ensure sovereignty uh, on data and how to make sure that uh, participants in data spaces are, can be trusted. And last but not least, we will cover a number of uh, technology components that are aimed at supporting data value creation, um, uh, essentially how you would be able to offer uh, services and data in data spaces uh, based on i trust and how uh, providers of such uh, data and services uh, will be able to uh, monetize their offering and get money out of it. Um, from um, uh, the perspective of materialization of these uh, building blocks, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, we have uh, delivered a comprehensive set of um, um, uh, building blocks um, based on the combination of uh, building blocks that are being provided by Fiber Foundation. And as you may know, that means all of them are uh, implemented as open source and um, the specifications uh, being provided by iShare Foundation. Um, in the particular case of um, the pillar of technology blo blocks connected to uh, the support of data sovereignty concepts and trust, uh, we uh, adhere to uh, specifications being uh, uh, delivered by the iShare Foundation, which has been implemented is in open source through components of Fiverr. And 
components for data interoperability and for data value creation comes out of Fiware. And last but not least, um, some of the building blocks that will be needed in order to create um, uh, data spaces and deal with governance of those data spaces will rely on um, iShare recommendations. What is uh, relevant to mention is that uh, by means of combining building blocks coming out from iShare and Fiware, we are bringing together a set of mature technologies already proven in production. And therefore, this uh, genuine combination is uh, really uh, supporting creation of data spaces today. Let me elaborate a bit on some fundamental principles, going deeper into the details of uh, some of these building blocks um, that will help you to understand a bit um, uh, what is the kind of data spaces we will be creating uh, based on iFortress. From our perspective, one of the fundamental principles to cover is that of uh, allowing open innovation to take place in data spaces. And therefore, that means that um, every participant that is uh, publishing data in, in data spaces or publishing data services should be able to do so without knowing a priori who will be the participants that consume that uh, data or data services. This is a fundamental uh, decoupling principle that will be supported in iFortrust. The same way data consumers that uh, will join data spaces should be able to discover what data uh, and data services may exist, but uh, without knowing a priori which are those. So there will, this means there will be services um, helping to advertise offerings about data and data services and through those services uh, um, uh, consuming uh, participants will be able to discover and find out and, um, and um, uh, get access rights to use those services but again uh, supporting this decoupling of participants. And everyone should uh, be able to understand uh, how uh, data and data services will be consumed. And this cannot be uh, implemented in any other way, but really by means of defining a common language that all participants within the data spaces will use. And uh, if we talk about um, uh, language, we talk about um, the sentences you construct, the vocabulary you use, and what are the terms and the rules that are being used when, whenever any uh, party speaks uh, to another party. Uh, in technical terms, this means that uh, we have to adopt a concrete, very well-defined data exchange API, because that is what um, uh, at the end of the day makes uh, or defines the kind of uh, sentences you construct. We uh, also defined what are the common data models that participants in the data spaces will use and reuse. Uh, because that uh, defines at the end of the day the vocabulary that is being used, and also what are the common mechanisms for identity and access management. These three elements are very well defined in any i for trust data space and have a very concrete mapping into very concrete technologies. What are those technologies? What is a bit the vision going further? Well, um, in data spaces uh, powered by i trust participants will be essentially um, smart applications 
uh, that may already exist within given organizations, solving and improving whatever process and, uh, and supporting smart decisions. And they will be exchanging um, essentially digital twin data. So uh, uh, systems within i 4 2 data spaces are expected to be a smart uh, uh, solutions um, which have been designed around the concept of digital twins on what they are essentially exchanging is precisely uh, data about those digital twins. By means of digital twin data, we refer to the properties, relationships of uh, entities describing real world assets. Uh, like if I'm talking about the uh, smart building, the different floors of that building, the rooms in that building, and, and with attributes such as the temperature, um, capacity, stuff like that. Uh, when we talk about smart cities, we talk about the streets, the um, uh, buses, um, um, uh, different elements that describe what's going on in the city. And in combination to this, we are uh, supporting uh, uh, a common identity and access management framework that uh, will be used to uh, make sure that each participant uh, defines a well-defined set of rules for access to their data. And this is um, uh, enforced, these rules are enforced whenever a given participant um, get access to that data. As part of the identity and access management framework, we will support in i trust the concept of trust authority also referred as trust anchor in, in some other um, environments. And um, this will rely on um, iShared satellite services. Um, last but not least, there will be, as mentioned before, a number of uh, common services, and those will be the ones connected to data marketplace, and publication services. With this, we will be able to create data spaces. And this is simply a very high level view of uh, the different participants in a, in a data space powered by iShare. Um, each of the participants will deploy a number of components uh that um, they need to deploy in order to participate in the data space typically this will be a context broker component enabling exchange of digital twin data showing um, so each participant will be exposing what um, <clears throat> uh, uh, the kind of digital twins uh, that uh, represent that part of the world they are managing. There will be an identity provider and also an authorization registry connected to each of the participants. And then as common services um, um, accessible to all participants in the data space, we will have a trust anchor service that is in our case implemented through the ISER satellite services. We will come afterwards with more details about what this means. And also as a common service, uh, sort of a marketplace and publication platform where the different participants will be exposing um, and offering uh, their data resources and data services. Very important in IFO Trust, this was part of the design principles we had in mind, is that of uh, aligning with uh, building blocks of the Connecting Europe Facility Program. And there are particularly three building blocks we envision will be integrated as part of the IFO Trust uh, framework. Some of them are already um, incorporated. Uh, one of them in very core is the context broker that you um, may know will be the basis for exchanging digital twin data. EIDAS 
is another building block that uh, will have to do with uh, being able to identify uh, the different participants in the data space. And these two building blocks are already integrated into the existing framework. The one that we will uh, we are planning to integrate in the near future is uh, the European Blockchain Service Infrastructure, which is a component uh, based on which we uh, will um, intend to support certain functionalities uh, linked to uh, uh, creating unmutable logs of, of certain transactions in the data space that will be uh, later on uh, supporting concepts such as uh, uh, out, auditing of processes and, um, uh, and certain elements that might be relevant for uh, supporting payment and billing. This is a bit uh, the, the how these um, um, connecting Euro facility building blocks um, um, uh, become present in the picture in connection with the um, uh, main blocks that I have already introduced. And, and this uh, slide is somehow capturing a bit uh, what are the major um, open standards that are supported and have been adopted uh, in the, the current phase of IFOT Press? Because I, I'm, I say current phase because we plan to evolve this uh, technology framework. And uh, but here we have uh, uh, we have illustrated we have captured what um, is uh, being supported um, nowadays. Um, for the different pillars regarding uh, data exchange API, we support the context worker technology that implements the standard NGSILD interface. We come with uh, data models that uh, that are uh, becoming visible um, uh, through the Smart Data Models Initiative and regarding data sovereignty and trust, um, support to standards like OpenID Connect or XACML, and for data value creation, the, the support of um, DCAT or DCAT AP standards together with PM for the OpenAPS. But I, we will go into that um, later on, uh, giving um, 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 more, more details. Um, i for trust is not just about um, delivering the technology, delivering the framework that can be used for creating data spaces. It's also about creating a community around how we plan to set up this community will be by means of um, engaging uh, digital innovation hubs all over Europe that are interested in, in um, in, in, in gaining knowledge about data spaces and then in really bringing the opportunities that data spaces uh, uh, bring uh, to the SMEs in their networks and, um, and that want to really become protagonists of the data space movement in Europe. Uh, uh, of course, Fiware iShare Foundation will be uh, supporting this uh, community by bringing uh, first uh, technical support and uh, also training. The intent is to equip all this digital innovation hub with the necessary skills, technical expertise that allow them to really um, um, scale up the number of uh, uh, companies that uh, will uh, master the technology as to be able to create data spaces uh, uh, along Europe. There will be a community platform that is um, set up uh, enabling exchange uh, among participants um, in terms of experiences, also asking technical questions, getting all the support, and um, partnering and discussing about partnerships towards creating of uh, business opportunities. 
such community platform will be based on a platform uh, delivered by Funding Box, uh, who will take care of, um, together with Fiverr Foundation and iShare Foundation, the management of the community around. And as part of this um, uh, community, and uh, to, in order to kind of uh, ramp up uh, the adoption of um, i for trust technologies, the i for trust program will uh, fund up to 32 um, uh, bottom-up experiments or simply referred as experiments that uh, will um, start using i for trust They will receive grants for that purpose. And um, uh, these uh, 32 experiments will be involving consortia of uh, at least one digital innovation hub and at least um, three or more uh, SMEs. And uh, this will be our first pioneer experiments that will help uh, to uh, showcase uh, how data spaces can be created using Apple Trust uh, uh, building blocks and um, will be uh, our main um, catalyst uh, towards uh, fostering adoption of, uh, uh, of uh, the technologies and governance uh, building blocks. I have already mentioned uh, about the i for trust values. I will not uh, elaborate on that again because um, uh, I have uh, done this already. Um, and now let's go into more details uh, regarding what are the um, i trust uh, building blocks. And we will start with those associated to data interoperability. Mm -hmm. um, as I mentioned at the beginning, the, um, uh, the whole idea within i trust is that it will be about creating data spaces where the essential coin of exchange among the different participants will be digital twin data. But what we refer to as digital twin is uh, well is a digital representation of an asset uh, which is characterized by attributes um, uh, these might be properties uh, or relationships that establish connection with other digital twins those attributes may take values that change over time some of them are quite static but other quite dynamic like for instance the speed of a given bus within a city. Um, some of these uh, digital twins, because they are asset, uh, have a location, has a location associated to them. This is not a mass requirement, but it's quite common. And essentially uh, what we are bringing as part of i trust is that the way we will be exchanging um, data about digital twins will be through a standard API that uh, give access to digital twin data. This API is, is NGSI LD, which is currently a standard uh, uh, promoted by Etsy and um, is the basis already for uh, many smart solutions that are out there in the market in, in, in some uh, domains like smart cities being actually a de facto standard uh, adopted uh, among the uh, many cities in Europe. Uh, the second element that is required when uh, we um, uh, want to support interoperability is that of defining common data models uh, because if we are exchanging information about the buses, to give an example, in a city, we need to understand and, and adopt a common set of attributes that uh, describe a bus um, among the different participants. So therefore, we need common data models. And for this, we uh, will rely on a quite um, interesting um, and, and fast-growing initiative 
uh, which is the Smart Data Models Initiative, that uh, today has more than 600 data models being defined. And one of the purpose we pursue as part of Five for Trust is that of enriching the data models that are being defined with new data models that may come out of the data spaces that are created, but of course, and also allow that data spaces could reuse what uh, are the data models that have been mined. Well, this is just elaborating on this concept of NGSILD and the notion of digital twins. Um, if I, this is really a, a cross the main concept, uh, general purpose. If we talk about a city, to give an example, I may have digital twins representing uh, shops or buses or citizens, each of them having attributes, uh, some of them quite dynamic, uh, like for instance, the uh, um, uh, location of a given bus, uh, some of them might be still dynamic, but not that dynamic, like the, uh, the name of the driver or the ID of the driver that is um, uh, driving a given bus that may be changing perhaps twice per day. And, and some of them might be rather static, like the license plate of, uh, of a given bus. But altogether, this uh, means uh, with these attributes, each of the um, uh, entities, so-called digital twins, are described. And um, uh, the, the, the set of values of attributes for a given digital twin, like for instance, a concrete mass is what represents its state, the state that can evolve over time. And you are always being able to access uh, through a well-defined API, which is NGSI LD. Um, this applies to cities, but uh, could apply as well uh, for manufacturing, uh, where of course the entities might be different, transport robots, palletizers, uh, subfloor doors is what be the kind of uh, digital twin entities you will manage within a given um, uh, factory or, or warehouse um, um, environment. But uh, conceptually, we have the same. We have entities with attributes whose values change over time. And again, the way to access uh, those values will be through this NGSI API. Same applies with agri-food. Again, entities might be different. The aspects that are, might be relevant to underline, like for instance, the fact that there might be certain entities that might be common across domains. So if we talk about weather predictions, to give an example, this might be something relevant for cities, but also agri-food. Um, and this means some of the data models we are going to define are going to be really cross-domain. And uh, this is something that is going to be essential in the definition of data spaces, because actually one of the things we want to incentivate is that of uh, creating data value chains that uh, can expand across different domains. Um, um, health could be another kind of uh, domain where this digital twin representation applies or energy uh, and, and so on. The NGSILD uh, provides a simple yet powerful REST API for getting access to all this uh, data from digital twins. We say it's simple because it um, offer all the kind of operations that uh, any web developer would expect from a RESTful API. So you have uh, the ability to refer to the, um, uh, the uh, attributes of entities of any given type through a path of a resource that then you, on, on top of which you can then perform the standard get, pause, put, patch, and delete operations. But NGSILD as well, will be offering a number of rather powerful operations, like, uh, for instance, supporting geo queries, uh, performing subscription notifications. So a given application may say, OK, send me a notification whenever the value of this attribute uh, uh, gets over a certain threshold. 
um, you may um, be able to support both pull and push style of uh, communication. Uh, you may uh, support different renderings when obtaining results of a given query. And uh, you can perform also operations not only uh, around the current value of uh, attributes of an uh, existing entity, but also uh, what will be, what have been the values of, uh, uh, of those attributes over time. This is what we refer to as temporal operations. And there are a number of uh, federation mechanisms supported. We will see this with all details and along the sessions that will be focused on NGSI LD programming in the training camp uh, sessions uh, today and tomorrow. And also I think on Wednesday. So uh, don't worry, you will get all the details about it, this. Smart data models, as I mentioned, uh, this is a link uh, of uh, the uh, place on GitHub where data models compatible with uh, NGSILD are being defined and um, that will be, um, is intending to become a common repository where data models being reusable across data spaces will uh, be accessible. And um, these smart data models are not intended to reinvent the wheel. We really leverage existing standards when they exist, but we are bringing something that is quite powerful and meaningful for developers, which is, okay, how a given data model, which may have been defined by a given standard organization, how that maps into valid JSON and JSON-LD structures that are compatible with the NGSI LD API. And that means that developers do not really come, have to come with that mapping themselves. They can go to this space on GitHub, take a look at the um, mapping descriptions that have been provided and simply use them in the, when developing. Of course, there might be some models for which there are, may not exist a standard, in which case, uh, the idea would be that of uh, uh, supporting the implementation, the definition of such models. And uh, we have uh, bring into uh, place um, a community driven approach uh, based on meritocracy and best uh, uh, principles from open source communities. Uh, which um, are helping um, uh, teams to contribute the definition of models they have uh, defined already in their projects and share that so um, new projects uh, do not need to invest again in defining the models but actually reuse what some others have been doing. Of uh, the data models that are being uh, offered through this um, environment are open and relatively free. And that is what we are um, kind of promoting for data spaces. Um, this is a bit how um, the uh, data models are being described and structured in this space on GitHub. I will recommend you to visit. And uh, you will see data models uh, organized around the concept of subjects. So we may have a subject which is uh, has to do with parking or with weather. And uh, there are, might be a number of models uh, already as part of uh, each of these subjects. So um, in regarding parking, we may have um, uh, models for um, off-site uh, parking lots or, or inside uh, parking lots. Uh, um, and, um, and each of these subjects might be referred from uh, one or more domains, because for instance, the subject of weather is meaningful for many different domains like uh, smart cities, but also smart energy or smart agri-food and therefore might be referred from all of them. 
there will be a specific session during the training rather focused on smart data models that will be uh, um, uh, given by Alberto Abella, our expert and, 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 and person leading the smart data models initiative. So uh, you will have uh, time to, to learn all about this later during this session. The following slide simply uh, tries to emphasize that this combination of the two standards, NGSILE on one hand, and Smart Data Models Initiative, is something that has been supported by different organizations worldwide, Etsy, DSMA, TM Forum, in the particular case of um, Smart Cities by uh, the Connecting Euro Facility Program and also in programs even going beyond Europe, like the IODX uh, program in India, which is establishing a bit uh, what are the standards for data exchange in, in cities. That is somehow how we are covering the uh, data interoperability building blocks. And uh, now the next uh, section will elaborate on building blocks for data sovereignty and trust. And for this, I will be giving the floor to uh, Rajiv, who uh, will then present the next slide. Rajiv, whenever you are ready. Yes. Uh, if you stop sharing, then I can start sharing. Thank you, Joan. Yeah, stop sharing. Hello, good morning and very well, very warm welcome to everyone. Uh, thank you, Joanjo, for um, the introduction so far. And let me continue on the um, on the IFA Trust building blocks that we uh, that uh, Joanjo was explaining. Now I will be explaining a bit about the second pillar that's about the sovereignty and trust, right? So sovereignty and trust, uh, data sovereignty is what. Um, uh, is key uh, for for unlocking the data that um, uh, that is uh, you know available at all the organizations um, uh, because uh, all the organizations feel that um, they need to have the control over the data that uh, that is their own uh, and they only want to uh, share it with uh, other participants when they know what exactly is being done with that data because data of course can be sensitive. Uh, and can be, uh, of course, very well used, but it can also be very well misused. So um, uh, trust, uh, trust, and sovereignty are the key aspects in a, in, a, in in our uh, view to enable data sharing uh, 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 across different organizations. So uh, what I share brings in in in, in this I for trust uh, um, initiative is is the trust framework that we have developed. Uh, using, of course, the existing open standards. Um, and the focus of iShare is uh, uh, to allow um, uh, identification, authentication, and authorization of um, identities and, uh, you know, uh, uh, in a standardized manner. So we reuse existing open standards like OpenID Connect OR 2.0 XSEMO. And, and our framework is closely aligned to uh, and, and, in fact, uses EIDAS uh, framework as well. So it is pretty standard in, in what uh, it does, but of course, um, uh, some of these standards are not designed for enterprise use. So uh, there are some adjustments that we have done to make sure that it it, uh, it works well in B2B, B2G situations as well, right? So um, it, it is, it is uh, all, uh, when we started iShare, uh, we learned uh, from organizations in the sector element that was holding them back in, in order to share data with each other. Uh, I mean, of course, they do share data with each other uh, to some extent, um, which is necessary for them to do business. But there are more uh, potential solutions and more potential opportunities that they miss out on because there is more data that they can share, but they do not share uh, out of uh, lack of trust. So in order to break that um, uh, uh, and, and uh, allow them or in, in order to give them control, the, this framework is designed, of course, on one end, it has a technical specification, uh, 
but on the other hand the technical specification ties very well with the legal framework uh, which allows the participants to uh, you know uh, gain trust with whom they are sharing the data and they can determine what the receiver of that data can do with that data so uh, of course various forms of uh, interactions are possible in that sense machine to machine so when two servers are talking and sharing data with each other or when there is a um, human or employee of one organization accesses data from another organization in in both cases we need um, trustworthy identification authentication and authorization so that is what the specification provides there are of course then you need the flexibility in the authorizations uh, for some people and uh, at different times you need to provide different kind of authorizations to either a company or a uh, person um, and for some where you have a regular um, uh, connection with or regular um, business with you may want to give broader access to them so there has to be some flexibility in the terms of authorization you give um, identities uh, of course they need to be recognized uh, by you but it should not mean that it is locked into one particular um, you know provider uh, it should be easier for uh, every participant to switch their identities and still continue to operate um, uh, you know and identify in the same manner in the in the network so that they can continue to uh, gain access to the to the data that they are authorized for right of course, we have often seen that um, pe people and organizations having authorization itself does not um, uh, suffice. And many times they need to delegate it further down the line um, so that other parties or other subcontractors, for example, can can also have access to direct uh, to the data directly instead of going, uh, you know, via via the, um, the delegator of, for that data. That is just to make the process much more efficient and and getting more real time or more uh, up to date information, uh, avoiding any uh, miscommunications and uh, errors due to not updated data. And all this when you still are in control as a owner of that data, so you always determine what are the rules uh, when you share the data. Okay, what the receiver of the data could you, uh, could do, right? And there is, of course, the legal um, backing behind it uh, to make sure that uh, the other party can comply with. So in essence, we, the, the iShare is a legal framework that we provide with the legal assurance. And um, as you can see in this, uh, uh, we have three kind of roles defined in iShare. Uh, the data consumer who receives the data, the data provider who is providing the data, and the data owner who is owner of that data at a particular given uh, time uh, who allows access to the consumer to receive the data. And for that, uh, we, re we uh, reuse existing identities uh, that are available, uh, uh, that data consumer and data owner and those can use. But at the same time, we also have defined something called authorization registry where um, uh, from where you can get as a data provider, you can verify if the uh, if the particular identity has access to the data that it is requesting to. And um, you also give out, okay, what, uh, what kind of access that they have and what they can do with that data. And uh, of course, through this whole uh, data space, uh, the central aspect is the, uh, is the iShare satellite. Uh, which guards the trust in the data space in the sense that satellite is nothing but um, a role where um, that organization is responsible for onboarding participants of this data space so that every other participant of the data space can identify and authenticate that particular uh, uh, participant and can um, share data with them in a trusted manner. So. Uh, satellite plays that key role in enabling that of course these roles are uh, satellite role as well is a federated role um, and and so are the other uh, roles like identity providers and authorization registry so it's not like one party can uh, one party playing all that roles but there are multiple players that are possible and uh, the data owner data provider and data consumer have complete freedom of the choice of uh, with whom they want to do uh, uh, their business with or 
which identity provider they want to select or which authorization registry they want to select right and this enables uh, of course not only uh, sharing of data bit, uh, within the data space but also cross domain uh, data sharing this is just an example of how various parties like logistics uh, there is a financial industry like bank and insurance and there's customs uh, and when if you talk about um, goods being transported uh, it's not only goods but there's a lot of data flow uh, involved in um, uh, in that transaction uh, of, of goods flow because from the start to end there is a lot of paperwork that is being done and there are a lot of part a uh, lot of different kinds of organizations are involved in in the whole chain and um, if you imagine if you combine or if you enable uh, cross domain data sharing uh, in an easier manner uh, how much more efficient we can uh, efficiencies we can bring in this uh, whole uh, supply chain or value chain right and of course as i mentioned earlier um, the key is the trust element and the providing the data sovereignty to the, all those participants in the supply chain uh, of course this example is of logistics but it is of course replicable in every other um, uh, sector or every other industry where there are of course different kinds of parties involved um, and you want to share data um, with them uh, in a decentralized manner uh, so that you, it's it's not uh, what is enabled is decentralized data sharing and not something like you have to copy your data to a central platform from where data is shared right so uh, and and all that by still maintaining the data sovereignty and trust uh, in the network you share your data and you remain in control and the receiver of the data is also assured that you, they are getting the data from the right source uh, and they can trust that information because uh, of within uh, it is being uh, received in a trusted environment. <clears throat> Why I share? Well, this is just to explain to you uh, what we have currently as an I share. Um, uh, it's a very well known and proven framework, um, uh, trust framework, which which is operational already, and many organizations are taking benefit of it. Um, it is a standard for B2B data sharing, right? Uh, and of course, within the domain, but also cross domains, uh, data sharing uh, initiatives like uh, IDS um, uh, also acknowledge uh, what we do is uh, as I share and uh, uh, parts of uh, their reference architecture are aligned with what I share framework uh, has defined. Um, and of course, our identity um, framework is based on the self-building block EIDAS, uh, as already explained by Quanco. Um, yeah. Uh, furthermore, reasons currently there are already in Dutch logistics space um, uh, data for more than 100,000 companies available and being shared uh, by different participants. You can see some examples here. And what we expect um, we also have upcoming data energy space uh, uh, energy data space um, once it is operational it becomes um, uh, the data of around uh, 1.5 million companies uh, would be available within that uh, data space for other consumers uh, in in a trusted manner of course so there are more um, uh, uh, data spaces that are being formed, uh, which uses uh, iShare as the basis framework. And of course, in i for trust um, uh, uh, all the experiments, we expect that um, uh, uh, i for trust building blocks, uh, uh, they will use that and uh, they will be interoperable uh, with all these uh, 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 data spaces that are being created and immediately can benefit from uh, sharing data on, on those lines. I think, Juanjo, it's uh, your part, no? Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, let me just briefly now share again the slides. Uh, give me a second. <clears throat> So, 
next is about the data value creation set of technology building blocks. Um, this essentially we will distinguish two um, kind of uh, services on, on one side, and this is the first uh, set of services that will be available in the current phase of IFO Trust is data marketplace services. This is essentially um, a service through which the different participants in the data space will be able to define and uh, advertise offerings around uh, uh, any kind of digital asset, but concretely in the context of data spaces would be um, data um, access services or data processing services. Um, this kind of marketplace services are actually uh, uh, well integrated with the identity management and and um, in identity and access management framework that will be part of uh, IFOR Trust. Uh, we will see in the session that is um, in the afternoon, I think it's on Friday, uh, how um, the uh, marketplace services uh, will be integrated with um, the uh, um, components every participant deploy. Uh, for a particular um, um, reference use case scenario. Um, and it's worth to mention that the marketplace services that are implemented uh, in IFO Trust are relying on a strong uh, set of recommendations coming from an organization called TM Forum. The Forum is a, a well-reputed organization that um, is particularly strong in the um, um, telecom and service providers arena. Um, and they have come uh, with a set of uh, recommendations about uh, APIs to support um, uh, different business support uh, processes. And um, in particular, we are uh, adopting and, and incorporating those set of APIs associated to um, the life cycle of uh, product offerings, product definitions, and, and uh, uh, every aspect connected to product orderings and, and, and usage management and billing. <clears throat> and this have been the basis for the creation of the marketplace services uh, supported in IFO Trust. And through this, uh, the different participants will be able to expose services and be able to charge for them, uh, supporting different uh, pricing models uh, with uh, support of um, from very basic models like uh, of course, um, uh, um, offering for free of uh, um, data and um, data processing services to one-time uh, payment of, of monthly uh, fees uh, to more sophisticated um, uh, pricing models based on paper use, um, adoption of uh, discounts, and fees, and so on and so forth. So quite a number of um, different revenue sharing and pricing models to be supported through the marketplace services in i Trust. And um, also as part of the description of what you offer, the concrete license terms and conditions that uh, a given provider will associate to its service. Not yet available, but soon in, in, in a future release of IFO Trust, we will also integrate uh, the ability to um, get part of the resources, particularly data resources, uh, available in existing publication platforms that may be compliant with the standards like DCAT AP. Uh, and this as a means of uh, supporting uh, smooth migration and evolution of existing open data portals, particularly in public administrations, uh, to uh, uh, data marketplaces, which are quite more advanced concepts and will be 
definitely supported within i for trust part as uh, complementing these data publication services there will be also data discovery brokering services based on um, ngsild um, and um, uh, as part of uh, the evolution of the framework of it. And with this, I move now again to Rajib so that he could cover the uh, building blocks connected to data spaces governance. So, Rajib, yeah. you are ready? Yeah. I will stop sharing. So, now, okay. thank you. Let me share my screen in a bit. I hope you are able to see my screen. Okay, so now we, we already talked about the technology building blocks, or the technology pillars of the, of the building blocks for creation of data space that we bring in IFO Trust. Um, uh, and, and of course, the key aspect or the key elements that uh, are there, uh, once you have uh, something, uh, once you have a solution, you need to also operationalize it and you need to maintain that. And um, a part of that is in um, the data space governance. So if you have a data space, which is uh, which you initiate, you also need to govern that data space in order to continue uh, to make sure that it continues to operate and remains relevant even in future by making sure you uh, keep on updating uh, as new versions of technology or new technologies are made available which makes life easier for everyone right <clears throat> so yeah this building block or this pillar is about the governance and uh, since i share is already a, a framework which has an operational governance in place um, and and this whole legal framework that we provide um so it it uh, sorry i'll go back a bit so it, it covers a few elements and we provide um uh, uh, some basis for every data space uh, to use that as as a foundation uh, to begin with and of course uh, each data space can further add um uh, add their own elements uh, to this governance aspect now let's see some of the uh, uh, some of the detail points in some of these uh, blocks. Uh, so in, in terms of business agreements, um, uh, as I was mentioning earlier, that um, uh, you remain as a uh, as a data owner, you remain in control of what happens to your data. And that, in a sense, brings uh, you the data sovereignty. And the way we achieve that um, is that, of course, um, when, you, uh, when you join a data space, you sign up and uh, agreement, uh, which every other participant has also signed, and uh, this uh, this signing uh, this concept is called multilateral uh, trust uh, because you 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 all sign the same agreement, uh, and in that agreement you agree that you will abide by the terms of use, um, and uh, you will uh, abide by the licenses that are attached to the data when you receive that data, right? So uh, this enables every member uh, of that data space um, to trust each other and sh share data with each other. So now the other part is, of course, how does the owner inform uh, the consumer about, OK, what rights you have over this data? And for that, we have the concept called data licenses uh, that we have brought in. And this license itself determines what the receiver of that data can do. Just an example. Um, on a very uh, open range, it can be a license where you know, yeah, when you receive this data, you are free to use this as you will. That's on one end of the spectrum, and on the other end, there could be like, okay, you you receive this data only to process processing so and so, and you can use this data only once, and after that, you have to delete it. Or, uh, you know, for example, you can uh, only have this data for one week or something. That could be uh, the term of this license itself. And when you authorize someone, you attach a license to that uh, authorization. So that when consumer receives that data, it uses that, it, it knows, okay, under that license, it has received it and it has to make sure that it follows, um, uh, uh, it, it abides by that license so that there is no 
uh, uh, misuse of the trust. Of course, if uh, the owner determines that the receiver of the data did not um, uh, fulfill its obligation, then it has also the legal means uh, uh, to, uh, you know, take action against that receiver. Um, and it can prove that this data has been shared under these conditions because um, as per our specifications, when you share data, these are all digitally signed um, information that is shared across between participants so that they can keep a log of those um, uh, digitally signed um, uh, information, which they can later use to prove that yeah, it was um, given under this pretext, right? Uh, some operational agreements uh, which we have already defined because in, in, in earlier slides I showed you the, the roles that we have defined as per uh, in, within the data space and of course the, the, some of these roles are enabler roles in the sense that these roles enable other participants to share data like identity provider like auth authorization registry like satellites so of course um, if you are uh, if you use them you need to be able to rely on them to so that they are always up and running or you know operational and they make sure that they follow certain processes so some of these of course the, the one that we um, require to maintain the basic level of trust are defined in aisha framework itself so when any participant who plays one of those roles uh, they need to certify themselves uh, by proving that they follow certain process and they have um, uh, taken care of, uh, you know, the service levels of, of their operational systems uh, with their availability and, uh, and those aspects. So these are the basic um, service level agreements and every, every data space has, of course, option to add their own specifications on top of that to make sure that it, uh, it becomes relevant within their data space, right? And of course, uh, governance, um, uh, because you have an operational uh, uh, solution and of course you, you need to govern it. And as, as in the data space is, um, is made up of all the participants and, and each participant has, um, has a say in the data space that they, they are part of. Um, it has to be properly governed in the sense that um, uh, it's it, it does not become one-sided or you know uh, other participants don't feel uh, left out in within the data space um, and of course to maintain the trust uh, within the within the network uh, to make sure that the uh, organizations that are providing services are uh, you know operational and uh, they maintain certain level of uh, assurance and um, operational ability uh, by providing regular audits and those things. So these uh, elements form the governance, um, and they uh, um, uh, the 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 data space bodies uh, they have to govern themselves. And for that, we have what we uh, Fiverr also has their own governance structure, and iShare has a governance structure which we recommend that uh, you can uh, uh, use them or you can uh, base your governance structure based on uh, these uh, governance frameworks that we have already developed and on top of it of course what additional requirements are there for your own data space you can uh, update your uh, governance framework in, in those um, areas but that gives you effective um, governance of your data space so that was about the building blocks of um, of the uh, data space and, and that was specifically on the pillar of the governance now i will uh, briefly introduce you to the uh, roles of five for trust uh, data spaces so <clears throat> as explained earlier in a data space uh, we always require that there is a uh, organizations who are involved in the detection the so consumer and the provider and of course, there is the owner who um, who authorizes uh, uh, the receiver to have data on its own behalf, right? But uh, in order to enable that, um, there are also supporting roles that are necessary in, in this space. So this, in essence, what you see on the screen is what we think is the basis of uh, any, any data space. 
So you need at the top, you need a trust anchor or trust provider. Uh, it is a trusted um, uh, uh, organization like, you know, an, an industry association or industry body, uh, usually not operating not for profit uh, and, and sort of neutral. Um, which is responsible for registering all the participants uh, who are playing different roles in this data space, right? Um, it needs to be neutral so that uh, uh, it's not uh, one-sided or, uh, you know, uh, the data space does not become one-sided. That, that is the key element behind it. And then on the middle layer, you see all the uh, data exchange uh, parties uh, who wants to exchange the data. So on the one hand is the consumer who wants to get the data. On the other hand is the data provider along with the data owner. So data owner has usually the data at the data provider and it will allow access to the data to the consumer via the data provider. Uh, and of course, on the bottom of the screen, you see the three elements that are the identity provider, the marketplace, and the authorization provider. These are the enabling roles, <coughs> uh, which enable uh, the the data exchanging parties to uh, either find themselves or identify, authenticate, authorize themselves. Right. We'll see in more detail about these roles uh, in in the next slides. Um, but of course, before moving on, uh, I, I for trust complies with uh, how iShare and Fiverr fits within this role. So as explained by Juanjo already that iShare specifications um, are, uh, uh, there are specifications given and based on the role models, these are the, uh, uh, the logos you can see at, uh, at various points. Uh, we have defined them as a role and there are some specifications available for them. So like for the trust provider, there is this iShare satellite role, the data consumer, uh, we are defined data consumer in iShare, there's data provider, which is also defined in iShare, this identity provider, um, which we, we already saw in our uh, role model, the authorizations ready, uh, provider, that's also uh, defined in the role model. Uh, and of course the marketplace uh, where you, ha you are able to find the data of other participants. And Fiverr brings the open source version of these um, uh, these roles. There are already implementations available from Fiverr. Uh, the key uh, key aspect or the key element of uh, it, uh, the data provider being like context broker, which can provide data in a standardized manner as explained by Juanjo using NJS ILD. The identity provider, there is identity provider implementation, which has been complied with iShare specifications now, which is also available open source. The Fiverr market or I for trust marketplace, um, uh, which is available under this project, uh, is of course um, a, a open source version coming from Fiverr, also compliant with ISA specifications on machine to machine and human to machine interactions, and authorization registry provider. So there is an authorization registry um, open source version available from Fiverr, which is compliant with ISA specifications. And now we will see in detail each role, what 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 each role uh, of IFO Trust means as essentially. Um, and uh, yeah, so trust provider essentially facilitates, uh, you know, the trust in the data space and it acts as a guardian uh, of the data space. Um, <clears throat> of course, the, within the data space, um, uh, you need uh, to be able to have um, a trusted party where every organization can register um, and sign that multilateral contract with and every other party who wants to interact with another party uh, should be able to uh, reach out to this trust provider to verify the, the authenticity of that identity. It, it also plays the role of you know guardian in the sense that when there are issues within the data space, it's a place where organizations can report uh, the issues with, and uh, that organ uh, the the trust provider can in turn um, uh, you know guide, uh, actions taken uh, so that uh, it it helps resolve the issues that a participant within the data space faces. But of course, uh, this all works in in a, in a well-governed manner, and it is a, uh, it is um, not only one organization determining it, but it's it's more of a democratic process in that, as explained in the governance structure. 
here, right? So, uh, but in 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 I for Trust, we expect, or in general, we expect every data space to have at least one organization playing this role. But it is not restricted to only one organization. Depending on the data space, there could be more providers playing this role within the data space. Right. So, uh, and now we talk about the data exchanging parties. Uh, so, because IFA Trust enables uh, data sharing among the parties in an, in an trusted and secure manner, each of these uh, organizations or each of these players can exchange data in a trusted manner. Data owner gets the sovereignty of the data and uh, ease of uh, ease of authorizing consumers to have uh, access to the data directly from its provider. Data provider uh, makes sure that it can, it, it identifies and authenticates the data consumer before sharing any kind of data, which the data owner has authorized towards, uh, to, right? And data consumer um, can get, easily get the data directly from the source, which is uh, much more up-to-date, right? Uh, and efficient. Um, and it also knows how to handle this data because now uh, data owner has defined what exactly how they are going to handle the data, right? Identity provider role. Um, in order for uh, uh, interactions where humans are involved, um, uh, human identity establishment is quite key to uh, key to the whole process, right? I mean. Today, if you log into your Gmail account, you need to provide your credentials to make sure that Gmail can give access to the email uh, uh, inbox, right, to you. But uh, in 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 organizations, of course, it also happens in a similar manner. If uh, I'm an employee of this organization and I want to access data at another organization, I need to be able to prove that I'm this person. I'm also working for this organization. And only when they are able to validate it, they are able to provide that data to me. So identity provider plays that key role in um, establishing that identity for humans within the network. So and in in iShare or in IFA Trust, we have defined identity provider provider role to be based on EIDAS framework. So there are of course level of assurance that are provided uh, for uh, for the identities when when the identity provider onboards the uh, person it determines or it um, based on the level of assurance required uh, it it requires a certain level of proofs and certain validations as in going a physical check or things like that to make sure that identity uh, assurance can be given and of course identity provider uh, the organization itself what processes it follows and what level of uh, you know eso standards or cmm levels they are following determines their level of assurance to make sure that you can rely on such a provider right so as a, as an a data provider you have uh, uh, you have an uh, option to ask for certain level of assurance of identity provider and certain level of assurance of identity itself before making any transaction with that user, right? So only when user satisfies those criteria, then only you, you can take the next steps in that sense. <coughs> and of course, Keyrock, as I mentioned earlier, uh, one of the open source components from Fiverr, uh, which is an identity provider uh, uh, service, um, we have, as a part of IFO Trust, uh, it has been evolved um, uh, to make sure it is compliant with ICHF specifications. Authorizations provider uh, is the role where, um, so ICHF defines, okay, the role as in um, this role uh, determines how, um, how uh, to give um, option to the data owner, uh, the, the possibility to define a policy or uh, define authorization towards um, data, uh, data consumers, right? So it can use in the back end uh, different kinds of technologies um, like you know policy based, like um, SAML, XML, whatever kind of technology they can use, or it can even use the transactional data like from within the back end systems like ERP, um, 
like uh, TRM or other kind of systems to determine if the user has access rights towards uh, certain data from the uh, data provider, right? So what we have defined in um, in these terms is the authorizations provider. There is an um, APIs that are defined so that every uh, data provider can query on those API to check if a certain consumer has access to certain data. The author it is authorization provider role uh, to determine based on various data sources it can think of or as defined in the in the in the business process of the data owner uh, which elements to use to determine the authorization of that um, uh, data consumer at, at that time and uh, provides uh, with an answer to the data provider whether this consumer has access to that data or not Again, Kirok, uh, which is the open source uh, fiber component, uh, also implements an authorization registry, um, uh, which is based on policies. Um, so users are able to define policies and store there uh, to, to provide authorizations to, to uh, data consumers. And uh, this is just an um, and one of the ways that uh, authorization registries can be created. So Kiro uh, provides that one, one option. Then there is, of course, the marketplace. So uh, when when there are known companies interacting with each other, you don't probably need a marketplace. But when uh, when you are talking about data spaces where there are a lot of organizations uh, working and uh, joining on on the basis of exchanging data of similar nature, but they are not on a regular uh, business connects with each other. Marketplace enables them to uh, share uh, what data can be made available from the uh, data owner. And for data consumers, it can search what kind of data is available in the market, which I can use for my own purposes. And Marketplace acts as a uh, hosting part, a place where uh, the data owners can uh, publish what data can, can they sell or can they make pro provision for? On the other hand, the data consumers can find different offerings um, and also, of course, competitive proper offerings of the similar data from various providers. And it can choose uh, which data to use or which data to buy and use uh, based on the conditions, based on the pricing and with various other factors. On top of it, of course, this marketplace can act as clearing house and the broker when required, because of course now two unknown parties um, are exchanging data, and everything now happens online uh, digitally, uh, because provider has already published what it it can sell, and consumer can now just transact that that via marketplace. But it it also needs there can be different business models like pay per use kind of models where you also need that, okay, uh, when consumer actually consumes that data, uh, there has to be a clearing house where uh, it's a third party which can do a billing towards that. that it, so there is no dispute whether um, the consumer actually received the data or provider uh, did provide the data or not. And based on that, the billing is clear, right? Of course, these are those we, the earlier roles we thought were, uh, of course, very basic and necessary. So we included them in IFA Trust. But beyond that, there are more roles uh, that we have seen, uh, which are enabler roles, um, which may be uh, necessary in some of the data spaces, but maybe not in every data space. Some of the examples are given here. Um, like, of course, I was just talking about clearing houses. So it can be a separate organization and not necessarily a marketplace. Um, uh, when there are a lot of identity providers, it may be necessary to have a, a broker in between to ease um, the integrations with uh, data, uh, data provider and data consumers in that sense. When there are, they are using different um, data standards, there might be need of uh, data language vocabulary provider or data model translation provider kind of services. So depending on the need of the data space, additional roles can be defined and their purpose are defined based on that. Uh, and they 
can be added in the in the data space right over to you uh, juando yes thanks so with this we will be moving to the uh, last part of the presentation <clears throat> let me share the screen again good i hope you see my screen um, which is a bit elaborating on uh, certain aspects uh, uh, regarding I for trust that go beyond the technology. Um, well, this was something I presented before, so um, simply again emphasize um, I for trust is is not just a program that is bringing um, a complete uh, framework for supporting the creation of data spaces, even though, of course, this is one of the major uh, goals of the program. It's about creating a community around it and um, uh, the way to, um, the kind of actors we want to engage are um, on one side, digital innovation hubs um, uh, across Europe, but also SMEs and um, Digital innovation hubs um, are welcome to become part of the um, iPhotrust community. We have uh, created uh, uh, what we refer to as the Digital Innovation Hubs Working Group, where any digital innovation hub in Europe uh, willing to understand a bit more about iPhotrust and disseminate that to uh, uh, SMEs in their network is invited to join. And um, SMEs individually can as well join the Alphatask community. Uh, the community is, is based on a platform that is supported by Funding Box, um, and you will um, you can get access to it uh, through the website of Alphatask. And um, as a first attempt to incorporate the um, um, members in this community and uh, stimulate adoption. We will be funding um, a number of experiments through a number of open calls. Target goal is that um, uh, through uh, once we conclude this second op uh, these two open calls, we will have uh, more than 150 SMEs involved in different kind of experiments using hypotrust um, technology. Uh, this is the uh, community platform uh, that I was referring to before. Uh, you have to click on the spaces.fundingsbox.com and, uh, well, you have here the link. And through this, you will get access to the community where you will find different uh, data spaces, sorry, different spaces for um exchange among members of the community this is um, the uh, working group for involving the ihs i was mentioning to you uh, there will be news where we will uh, keep you posted on any particular new um, event or new milestone we achieve within the program and um, very important there will be a help desk and uh, that uh, uh, diff the different members of the community could use to uh, formulate their questions on i for trust uh, and then this will be taken by either an existing DIH or the core partners of i for trust who will try to answer you as fast as possible and in the most uh, complete and comprehensive manner um, um, a little bit, uh, some few words regarding the uh, uh, DIHS working group. Uh, we are intending to um, engage digital innovation hubs in Europe that are part of the S3 catalog. This is, as uh, many of you may know, the catalog of digital, digital innovation hubs that the European Commission has set up. Uh, 
um, within their uh, European digital innovation hub programs. <clears throat> And well, uh, we invite um, uh, any DIHS uh, within that catalog to join our community and, and go through training and um, support uh, uh, provided by the different uh, I4 Trust uh, partners. What would be the benefits for DIHS joining I4 Trust is, well, they will uh, really get at the forefront of the data source revolution as we like to say um, many people is talking about data spaces today but uh, I think it's the right time to really uh, bring into concrete details how this can be materialized this is something you will be able to do with I for trust and therefore as a DIH you will be able to offer um, I for trust technologies to uh, the SMEs in your network and then um, you know uh, get everything ready for creating data spaces. Um, you will be receiving training and and coaching, and um, as such, the uh, DIHs that will uh, be willing to join the I for Trust community will uh, be able to attend any of our I for Trust. Um, uh, training camps that we will run from time to time and um, uh, experts that uh, technical experts uh, a given DIH may uh, bring on the table and and, and, and who uh, may attend this training camp will be able to not only uh, uh, become a fiber certified expert but also uh, become a fiber in, uh, sorry, an iShare implementation partner. And uh, they will be uh, also um, entitled to, to get a certification as a fiber, uh, sorry, as an i for trust expert that uh, then can uh, bring the necessary support to um, uh, SMEs willing to use the i for trust framework. There will be open calls, as I mentioned. Indeed, we have completed just the first of these open calls. Uh, the open calls uh, were aimed at um, engaging SMEs and slightly bigger companies who, together with DIHS, uh, uh, were able to create consortia uh, aimed at creation of data spaces for solving particular challenges. Uh, the kind of experiments we are looking for uh, will typically involve um, uh, four entities per proposal. So it should be at least one DIH and uh, uh, three SMEs or a slightly bigger companies. And uh, well, the kind of experiments we are looking for is any any kind of experiment where actually the implementation of um, an effective uh, data sharing policy um, among companies uh, uh, lead to creation of uh, some new service or the improving of the improvement of uh, existing processes. Um, Okay, this is just for uh, some of you to know uh, what was the timeline of the first open call. Um, actually, this has been completed, as I mentioned earlier. Um, the open call uh, one was closed on uh, 25th of October last year. And the first set of selected experiments where um, are going to start just um, uh, these days and actually the kickoff is this week through this uh, welcome event uh, that involves uh, this training. There will be a, an open call uh, following the same sort of pattern with info days and also a day at which the open call will be launched. That would be sometime along uh, May. Uh, probably end of May, 
and the uh, intention is that um, yeah uh, there will be a um, second set of uh, experiments uh, that will be selected through this second open call within the first open call results there were a number of experiments selected uh, here i am just listing the name of uh, some of them um, there were quite a number of them focused on agri-food and the um, value chain associated to um, agri-food uh, production. Uh, there were some others uh, focused on logistics, and smart environment, energy, uh, smart ports, so different topics. Uh, which in total um, brought to us a quite a good variety of experiments and, and also a good number of experiments that uh, may help to actually kick off the creation of uh, data spaces in sector of like logistics, agri-food and so on. Um, again, the second open call um, will be uh, closing third uh, quarter of 2022 will be probably launched in May. Uh, so those that uh, uh, wish to get engaged through this second open call, please stay tuned. Uh, we will be um, advertising and giving additional info uh, through the website. Just um, last slide to finish this presentation and we can spend a bit uh, the last 15 minutes to answer any questions you may have. Um, a bit of a summary of uh, uh, the good reasons why it would be important joining the i trust uh, program. First of all, we are talking about how to make data spaces a reality today. And this is by means of this genuine combination of iShare and Fiber building blocks that are already mature building blocks that have been used in multiple systems already in production, now bring together for the first time to bring support to uh, data spaces. We are talking about um, um, the combination of ecosystems um, associated to both iShare and Fiware that already mean a significant um, set of um, actors involved. Um, in iShare, we are talking about already more than 5,000 participants uh, and sharing data in Fiware, uh, more than 100 organization members uh, already developing solutions based on the technology, fiber technology. Um, so all together, we, we have a good basis for creating the kind of ecosystem that uh, uh, data spaces um, uh, that will help to boost development of uh, data spaces. Very important, we think it's that of the strategic alignment of the approach we are bringing into uh, on the table with the existing European Commission uh, SEV digital program, the Connecting Europe Facility program. So as part of the design is this idea of uh, being compatible with the uh, uh, building blocks that the European Commission are recommended uh, recommending under this program. And well, this is um, an excellent opportunity uh, uh, for SMEs, but also for digital innovation hubs to, to become um, hubs associated to this framework. Therefore, as a side effort, uh, be able to become fiber i hubs and also um, iShare partners. And the bottom line, be recognized as a frontrunner organizations uh, behind the development and the uptake of uh, data spaces uh, in Europe. Um, so thank you everyone uh, for uh, listening to this presentation. And with this, I suggest uh, we uh, just uh, devote the last 15 minutes if there are any, any questions uh, that uh, anyone has formulated, then we could uh, 
answer. Okay, there was one question already formulated about the uh, fiber security system. Um, yes, there will be a, a, a session that will be very much focused on the fiber security framework and that um, complies with ICR um, uh, specifications and, and therefore uh, will be uh, can be used as basis for creating uh, supporting identity and access management in Apple Trust. This particular session is uh, taking place. Uh, if you allow me just taking a look at the program and the identity and access management uh, components will be um, explained um, in detail during the session we will be running tomorrow at uh, 3.30, you know that uh, from this afternoon till Friday, every day we will have a training session from 3.30 to 6.30. And um, the one of today will be very much focused on NGSILD basics. And we will also be covering smart data models Jason Fox and Alba will be the trainers um, taking care of that session. And the, during the session tomorrow, <clears throat> we will be covering the components for identity and access management that uh, where I think we will be able to answer all your questions, all the questions you have. Any other question which may have been formulated? Okay, um, about um, support to blockchain smart contracts. Okay, this is a, a topic that we uh, had planned for um, a bit the second phase of I4 Trust, uh, but uh, we may accelerate this for some of the experiments uh, within I4 Trust uh, of, uh, that were uh, selected through the first open call that uh, were willing to use blockchain technology. Uh, there is um, um, there are a number of components um, available in Fiverr that uh, bring support to um, integration with blockchain technologies, blockchain networks, uh, essentially being able to uh, log um, concrete transactions you may perform using NGSILD into the blockchain and do this automatically for you. Is based on a component called Kenny's Major. So um, um, there will be, uh, uh, for those um, experiments, um, willing to integrate um, uh, or incorporate blockchain elements in the experiments, uh, you have got assigned a, a, a mentor that. Um, that is precisely uh, an expert in blockchain and knows very well what uh, these components from Fiverr that uh, support and solve this automated integration of NGSILD with, with um, blockchain networks. And uh, so you will have the opportunity to discuss with, um, with him um, how um, this uh, technology could be used. Um, for the rest of, of people um, not uh, connected to experiments in Apple Trust, just uh, tell you in advance that uh, in as part of the evolution of the Apple Trust framework, uh, we will uh, we are incorporating the support to the integration with uh, uh, blockchain networks, and uh, this will be something that will become available uh, along this year, um, probably first uh, quarter of this year. Any other questions you may have? If not, let me share very quickly 
um, <clears throat> with you the uh, uh, agenda for the remaining of the week. I think it could be good for everyone uh, to make sure we are on the same page. So uh, right now in 10 minutes, we will have a short break and we will have a plenary mentoring session that will be conducted by Rajit. This is uh, only specific to the I4 Trust experiments that were selected uh, in the first open call. In the afternoons, every day from 3.30 to 6.30, there will be a training, uh, a number of training sessions carried out by uh, different experts uh, where you will learn all you need to know about uh, fiber technologies and um, fiber iShare content technologies to be used um, in for creating data space based on I4 Trust, and in on Friday from 12, 12 to one, we will be running a, a training session that is particularly relevant for DIHs involved in experiments or willing to be part of the DIH working group, where we will. Um, uh, um, explain to you how we plan to handle multi-time support uh, to the different um, SMEs uh, willing to use I4 Trust uh, framework. There will be for the experiments that were selected through the first open call, a number of individual mentoring sessions that will be running from Tuesday to Friday. And I guess you have uh, been interacting already about and agreeing on, on what concrete um, time slot to use for the individual mentoring session. So all everything should be all set for you. Juanjo, do you still have time to answer one more question? Yeah, okay. What is, uh, how far fiber and digital print technology covered in this training? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, uh, when we talk about digital twin uh, and how we model uh, systems based on digital twins uh, using fiber contact broker technology, this is going to be quite um, extensively covered in this training. So there are, uh, today we will start with the basics, but there will be a session that is, is going to cover advanced NGSILD programming um, so therefore, I think uh, you will have all the, all the, um, uh, you will get all the hints to, to be able to uh, design your systems based on digital twins uh, using power technology uh, along the, this training could come. Okay, if not more questions, let's just stop here and have a quick uh, and short break five minutes, uh, those experiments that are, were selected uh, through the I4 Trust uh, open call will then be uh, able to join the uh, uh, plenary mentoring session. That will start at 12, so we will wait for you by then. Thank you very much and talk to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.